Hello, everyone. I'm George Kub. I'm the director of the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism at the National Institutes of Health and a senior investigator in the National Institute on Drug Abuse. And I just want to talk with you today about the neurocircuitry of alcohol use disorder. But before we get into any science of the neurocircuitry of alcohol use disorder, I just want to mention the scope of the problem. We have an opioid crisis. You're all well aware of that. And we have about 2 million individuals in the United States suffering from opioid use disorder. And we have a very large number of individuals who are overdosing on opioids. But we also have an endemic alcohol problem. And we have approximately 14 million individuals in the United States with an alcohol use disorder. And the problems associated with alcohol misuse just go on from there, from emergency department visits to deaths. But perhaps one of the more salient points is that half, yes, 50% of liver disease is now caused by alcohol in the United States. So I want to tell you about how the brain is involved. How is the brain involved in alcohol use disorder and in addictions in general? And so we, over the years, through a whole variety of different approaches from teaching undergraduates to working with animal models to seminal imaging studies done in the field, we've identified a heuristic framework to study the neurobiology of addiction. And that framework involves three stages. One is obviously binge intoxication, where you come intoxicated with alcohol. And that's illustrated on this slide in blue here. And that stage basically involves the domains of incentive salience and pathological habits, which all derive from the pleasurable effects of alcohol. And so when you are drinking and the stimuli that you associate with drinking come to take on rewarding properties, and those stimuli then can actually be motivating for you to seek a drink, see in the bar where you usually go to have a drink after work. The second stage is the withdrawal negative affect stage. And that really has to do with the fact that it's kind of like a very simple theory in psychology, what goes up must come down. So once you've engaged in overdoing alcohol, there's usually an after effect. Most of us know of it as a hangover, but when you become addicted to alcohol, when you reach the level of a moderate to severe alcohol use disorder, that withdrawal negative affect grows into much larger than a hangover. And so it's basically a state of physical signs of withdrawal, but also emotional signs of withdrawal. Basically, you feel terrible. There's dysphoria. It can also be life-threatening in the physical sense because of hyperthermia, which could actually kill you if you're not treated. So it's a very serious stage. And the domains of dysfunction there have to do with a loss of your reward systems and a gain of your stress systems in the brain. And then the third stage is the preoccupation anticipation, or we call it the craving stage. This is usually a stage where you stop drinking and maybe you've entered a prolonged period of absence from drinking, but there are residual effects, residual effects on your stress systems, but also in your executive function system, such that you really have trouble making decisions properly, or you're very impulsive, and it's very difficult to delay reinforcement or resist that next drink. And so from a neurobiological perspective, these stages overlap, but they are separated also into different circuits. And so what's illustrated here is the binge intoxication stage involves the basal ganglia, a very basic part of our brain that we use for motivated behavior and seeking out things in the environment that are necessary for a living. The withdrawal negative affect stage illustrated in red here is the extended amygdala, which incorporates part of our brain that's involved in fear and stress and avoiding dangerous things and dangerous situations. And that's activated during the withdrawal and negative affect stage. And then the prefrontal cortex is the green bit here is actually the front end of our brain, the part of our brain where we make decisions, like I said, and involves executive function. And we find that there are deficits, there are problems, there are loss of function in the prefrontal cortex. And since this is the overall controller of the basal ganglia pleasure system and the extended amygdala fear and stress system, you can understand how these all three interact. And so to summarize, 
we think of addiction as a progression, a progression in severity. So alcohol use disorder has mild and moderate and severe. When you start reaching the moderate and severe stage, you move from that reward part, which is blue on this slide, to the relief part, which we call negative reinforcement, where you're actually taking the drug to fix the problem that the drug caused. And in this case, the drug is causing the problem of you're miserable. So you're taking the drug to try and fix that. But in the process, the drug makes you even more miserable. And then we move to the protracted abstinence of the relapse stage when we stop drinking. Changes in our frontal cortex function. We need time for those to heal in a sense, to come back to normal. And so in the relapse stage, we often look back to either the reward or the release stage. So to put it all together down at the bottom of this slide, the loss of control and compulsivity that we associate with alcohol addiction or moderate to severe alcohol use disorder involves development of incentive salience and pathological habits for drugs through the reward system, development of reward deficits and sensitization of the stress circuits through our withdrawal system, and then compromised executive function associated with our frontal cortex. So if you want to know where all this material that I've been discussing with you can be found, there's actually a textbook that we produce called Drugs, Addiction, and the Brain. I'm showing it here. It's published by Elsevier. And there is a chapter in the beginning, the very first chapter on what is addiction, and then a chapter on alcohol and alcohol addiction. And um, most of the information and some of the diagrams that we covered in the presentation, you can find there. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.